to jump right into doing a deal analysis here real quickly. We're going to use some basic numbers so that you um, you don't have to stretch your brain too hard today. And uh, Lord knows I don't need to stretch mine too hard today. So let's just go with easy numbers. And let's say that the fair market value is $100,000 on a property that we found uh, from a lead that we used, uh, automated REI or some other lead source to get. And we've here's the property details. Let's assume it's appreciating at a whopping 4.5 percent oops where we at 4.5 percent per year okay let's assume the property needs little to no repairs let's also assume the fair market rent for the neighborhood is twelve hundred and fifty dollars per month all right Let's go, is everybody on, on target with me so far? Okay, now the asking price of the home. This is a motivated seller. He might even be willing, he might be willing to sell the property for the balance of his loan. I've done it many times, right? So let's assume the current balance of his loan is $87,000, all right? Remember the fair market value is 100,000 and he's asking the approximate loan balance of $87,000, okay? Now, down payment, he's not going to get anything. We're gonna start seeing these more and more. You just bet on it. <laughs> All right, over the next year or two, we're gonna find a lot of these, be prepared. Option term, let's say he's okay with three years or 36 months, okay? There are no arrears. And he, he wants in monthly rent every month. He wants in monthly rent every month enough to cover his payment, P-I-T-I. -I. His payment is only $845 a month. Hmm. Hmm. Starting to look interesting to me. All right. So let's do some calculations here and figure out our tenant buyer side. This is the property price that we'll be advertising. Okay. Looking for a tenant buyer to purchase this property over the next three years. Okay appreciation times term what's the first thing we do the equation in the parentheses appreciation times term so what's four and a half times three 13 and a half 13 and a half percent okay now what's fair market value One hundred thousand plus 13 and a half percent a hundred and thirteen thousand five hundred that would be the new purchase price for our tenant buyer okay let's go ahead to the next equation what's what's our potential option fee the tenant buyer price of a hundred and thirteen thousand five hundred minus the seller's asking price of eighty seven thousand I gotta get the calculator out now one hundred thirteen thousand five hundred minus 87,000 is $26,500. Okay. So okay. I'm going to write that down. $26,500. Hmm. Tenant buyer rent. The fair market rent for the neighborhood is 1250. So I should be able to find a tenant buyer that would be able to pay somewhere around 1250 maybe even 1300 because this is a special rent to buy opportunity okay so now we have you'll notice an additional column here that's not on the the assignment lease options form we've looked at before when now we have the green column for sandwich profits so let's figure up our sandwich profits here First thing we want to do is we want to figure out our total 
our total profits we already have it's 26,500 okay so I'm gonna write that down right here 26,500 how much could we reasonably expect in remember our qualifiers up here must have larger total equity profits then can be reasonably expected in upfront an upfront option fee from a tenant buyer. This is a hundred thousand dollar house. Am I going to be able to get twenty six thousand five hundred dollars in cash from a tenant buyer? Probably not. Not likely. When am I going? What What is more likely for me? On a hundred thousand dollar property, what's more likely that I'll find tenant buyers that have how much? Ten percent. Perhaps ten percent would be a, a a sizable amount. Okay, so let's assume we're looking for ten percent of one hundred thirteen thousand five hundred, which would be eleven thousand three hundred fifty dollars. That sounds kind of steep, even, but let's assume that. Okay, let's let's go for eleven thousand. $350. That's 10%. All right. How much does that leave in profits for the back end? How do I figure that up? Well, it's simple. I take 26,500, the total profits, and then I subtract what I'm going to collect up front. 350, 11,350. So that leaves 15,000. $150 in back end. Hmm. Does that make sense so far? I'm going to collect 11,350 up front and I'm still going to have $15,150 in equity that I haven't collected yet, but I will when they purchase the property. Okay which would be a grand total of 26,500. We're not done yet though. We still need to do the monthly profits. So here's how we're going to calculate monthly profits. We're going to take the tenant buyer rent and we're going to subtract our rent that we pay to the seller. So let's assume here we raise the rent to 1300 a month. We're going to pay $845 in seller's mortgage, PITI. <clears throat> That leaves us $455 a month in profits. Okay, $455 a month times 36 months, three years is $16,380. Okay, does that make sense? That's monthly profits over the whole term of the deal, all three years. So how do I figure up my total sandwich profits down here at the bottom? Total equity profits plus my total monthly profits. I'm just going to add the 26,500. 500 and then 16,380. Yep. So 26,500 plus 16,380 equals, are well, you guys ready for this? $42,880. In three years paid over paid over three years eleven thousand three hundred and fifty up front sixteen thousand over three years payments and then a back end shot in the arm of fifteen thousand when he buys can you believe can you even believe it that we just did the math and this is real math we did math on a hundred thousand dollar deal where the guy was asking 87, which ain't that cheap, but that's what he owed. So we're going to realize 42,000, almost $43,000 in profits. Actually, it'll be slightly more than this. Can somebody tell me why? Principal pay down. Principal pay down, Larry. Yeah, principal pay down. See, while I'm collecting all these rent profits, what he owes at 87000 is going to be going down. Down, 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 down. 
So that just creates more of a back end for me. See, that'll be added over here to the 15150, the back end profits. That'll just add more to the back end. So this might end up being 16 or 17 by the maybe 18. Maybe 19. Okay. So, but we're looking at a projected profit of $42,880 on a $100,000 property. <laughs> if you ever wondered why I love lease options, it's because they're incredible. That's incredible if you ask me. To be able to pull $42,000, that's 42% of its current value <clears throat> in a, on a shitty house. Oh, no, it's a pretty house, but it's a small, dinky, ooh, ooh, it's so middle class. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Okay, any questions about our calculations or about how this sandwich stuff works? Anything so far? Well, I kind of have a question. What happens when we can't find that information on Zillow about the uh, annual percentage um, rate? What's the other option? Yeah. I put a video in the quick start course in the basic skills section called how to find the appreciation value, appreciation rate. And I go in there and I show you two or three ways to do it, even though Zillow took it down off of there. You can still get it off Zillow and then use a calculator. But I, I go through it step by step. It takes like, I think the video's eight minutes long or something. So it's not that long. Yep. So finding the information, but this is how you, once you have the information, this is how you calculate it out, how you figure it out. Okay, and I recommend, like I said before, print this out, print these, print you out a little pad of these, put them together with a paper clip, and then as you need one, you can put the property address up here in the top right hand corner or something, and then you'll have a reference sheet for your deal. Okay, so you can easily run your math on it and figure out, hey, this tenant buyer that came to me, he only has $7,500 to put down. Okay, well, that's going to change the numbers. That's going to make your back end bigger. Okay, but you know, you could run the numbers any way you need to. All right, any any questions about this? Anything else, guys and gals? So thankful to have you all here. Uh, there's not one on there yet, but I will put it in the Facebook group and then I'll eventually add it to the VIP quick start course. I don't have a place to put it in there just yet, but I'm going to add a module in the quick start course with uh, some of these trainings in it and this, this form, this analysis form and all that. I'll get you guys this form. Don't you worry. <laughs> I know it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool, dude. Okay. Anything else? Anything else? Anybody here got an appetite for a $42,880 kind of profit deal? Nobody? Nobody wants it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I'll take it. Okay, what would happen just for fun? Let's just daydream, you know? And, and I'm all about daydreaming. When I was in school, they back in grade school, before they started giving grades, you know, they would just send home check marks and stuff like that on a little, like, one of my things was is uh, doesn't listen and follow directions. That was a big problem. I never got that one. I always got like an X on that one. And then another one was that I, I daydream a lot when I got that one. You know what? Those people can bite me. How's that? <laughs> How you like me now? <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. So uh, <laughs> what was I going to say? I don't remember. Let's daydream. What would happen if we push it from 100000 Remember, on a $100,000 house, we're going to make 42000 here in this example. What would happen if this was a million-dollar house? <laughs> What's the potential on a million-dollar house? Come on, y'all. That's a lot more. It's like, yeah. could you make, okay, so 100000 times 10 is a million. So if you're going to make 42,000 on a 100,000 is is it maybe possible that you could make 
four hundred twenty thousand. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be huge, whatever it is. Definitely. Okay. It's going to be a large number. So I'm showing you a small number, but the large numbers they're really, they're really bigger. <laughs> uh, uh, that's a Justinian. Uh, that's a Justinian code proverb. The larger numbers, they're definitely bigger. Hey Justin, I don't know if you ever <laughs> said it before, but is there uh, like a mount? where you say okay that's just too damn high for a lease option situation like would you actually try to lease option a million dollar house what would be like the damn payment that somebody ridiculously would try to pay yeah you know you never know uh, <laughs> I, I will try to do a million dollar house damn i will ask for at least a hundred thousand dollars down okay up front what do you think you would have to give the owner of that hundred thousand? All of it? No, no. It depends. You know, it depends on the guy. Each deal is different, but you know, it's possible to get a million dollar deal under contract and only owe the guy twenty or thirty thousand. Wow, that's possible. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. That's two three percent, right? <laughs> okay, so you know. uh, Think big, dream big, okay. dream big. It's okay to dream big. You know, um, I think we look at ourselves like we're little people a lot. And in a way, maybe we are. And that, in a way, that's one of your best, it's one of your best uh, qualities is to be a small guy like me. See, I can make a change real quick. I can get in, I can sneak in and get a big deal and sneak right back out. Okay. I don't have to carry the burden of a corporation or bullshit. So dream big guys. Don't think because you're just a solo person, you can't make huge deals happen. Every huge deal that happens, someone gets paid. <laughs>